and what the future holds for all these people. They're guinea pigs. I wonder, when is the next disaster going to happen? Where is it going to happen? And how big a disaster is the next one going to be? I guess it was in 82 or 83. That's when everything changed at Phillips. They started offering all these early retirements and retiring off all the old guys, all the people who knew a lot of stuff. And where, when I had first gone to work out there, we had like 12 chemists in the lab, and now we were down to like three. And the three of us were trying to do the work that 12 of us had done. Carol met her husband, Bert, at the Phillips plant where they both worked. It was always a little bit of a thrill to me when I would be out in the plant and I would see him unexpectedly and he would know that I had seen him. He was a very handsome man and he would have his tools, you know, all on his hip and everything and his hard hat and his glasses. And it, I always liked doing that. I liked seeing him like that. In August of 1989, an explosion at the plant killed two workers and injured several others. Although it made them nervous, Carol and Bert decided it was a bad time to leave Phillips. We had just, about a week or two earlier, signed the contract to buy this house. We were having this house built, and so we both needed an income to pay for this house, and it was something that we both wanted really bad. So, you know, I had to keep a job. See, this is where our new house is going to be, right here. We think that is 4227 Armand View, right there where it says sold. Right lot here. 29. What's lot 29? Ours is lot 30. Here it is, right here, lot 30. Right at the front door. Right at the front door, Lauren and Lindsay. Hands in the pocket. This word just in, we have a report of a huge explosion apparently at the Phillips refinery on the ship channel. It is an incredible fire. As many as 100 remain trapped inside a plant building. Carol was across town on a United Way fun drive when she got the news. I'll never forget, we were walking down this hall and this lady came up to us, a little lady that worked there, and she came up to us and she said, are y'all the people from Phillips? And we said, yeah, we are. And she said, well, your plant blew up. And they turned on a radio, and they said that it was in the Plant 5 area. I knew that was my husband's area. It was real unlike me, because I just, everyone was crowded up trying to hear, and I just started backing away and backing away. And I just backed up till I backed right into somebody's office up to the wall, and I just sat down in this chair, and I just started to cry. I could see the big cloud of smoke coming up from Pasadena, and we were about 30 miles away, and we could see it from there. As we were riding, I just kept sitting there, you know, just watching that smoke and watching that smoke. It's a 30-minute drive, but it seemed like it was three days. The ethylene fire continues to burn out of control. It looks as if a good part of the refinery structure has blown away. I would see people. I was glad they were alive and they were okay, and I would run up and I would hug them, but then I would say, have you seen Bert? Oh, I was glad to see him, and yet I, you know, the most important person I wanted to see, I didn't see. Well, these busloads of people would come up, I would just stand there and look at all their faces. I just wanted it to come out so bad. I kept thinking about that plant. And all the times I'd walk through there, and I tried to imagine where would be a safe place. And I knew there wasn't one. There wasn't one. 